Hi everyone, it's Liz here from Artful Endeavors, and I'm getting us ready for our white coneflower class today. We'll wait a little while and let folks join us. Okay, I'm getting myself set up here. As you join us, send me a comment. Let me know where you're coming from. Let me turn the volume off on my laptop. Okay, here we go. Oh, I see. Here's Shirley. Got Shirley and Shirley. Shirley Watson from Maine. Hey, Ann. I keep seeing your name crop up. Ontario, I bet it's a little chillier up there than it is here in North Carolina. We're having a very warm day. Okay, he's coming from Florida, Kannapolis, North Carolina. Everybody's posting in, commenting so quickly, I, my um, screen's flipping. Long Island, Mississauga. I've been to Mississauga before. Uh, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Virginia, Indiana, South Dakota. Some, some of you I recognize from my site or have taken some of my classes. And this um, class will be recorded. Uh, we've got Nevada and Texas joining us. So it's glad, good to see all these names cropping up here. Well, my studio is in Raleigh, North Carolina. And um, I'm excited. Next week, we start in-person classes once again. We've all been vaccinated, so we're excited to get back together. Got... Western Canada, British Columbia, Massachusetts. Debbie Brown from North Carolina. Yay, Debbie. Here's Florida. So Anne's saying it's cool up there. Single digit? Goodness. Well, it's in the 90s today, and it's supposed to be 66 on Sunday here. Welcome to South Carolina and Richmond, Texas. All right. We've got a lot of folks joining us here today. Um, they'll keep um, logging in and commenting, I'm sure. So... If you have a question, 
please type it in capital letters. That'll help me see it better. I'll pause uh, every so often and look at some of the comments. We'll still have people checking in. Hello, Belinda. Good to see you. And got a Wisconsin here. Maine, Tennessee. I think it's exciting that we're able to have people from all over the world log into classes together. So um, I'm glad to see all of you here. This is a, a fun painting. It's not really difficult. It's more fun than anything else. So you just get to play. Um, there's nothing here that's, um, that any of you can't do. So this was my original that I had designed. And I thought it would be fun when I started this one to work on a textured background. So I had textured this. Uh, I used um, this. I, I painted a good while ago, and the product is no longer being made by DecoArt, but they have all of the media products. I'm out of the texture, but um, this is the DecoArt media. This happens to be crackle paste. I did use some of the texture crackle on this painting. So let me get a little bit closer here and you can see some of the cracks. Let's see. Can I enlarge this painting or would you recommend against that? Certainly, wouldn't this be fun to, to be large? I love these large flowers. I um, In the packet, if you had ordered the packet, I sent you two sizes. And one was a card size. And this would, I think, would be really fun just to do on a card or a small piece of watercolor paper that you could attach to a card. So I think you could do this on most any size. I had um, one of our painters ask about doing different colors and I'll show you. Uh, I love the red violet color on some of the cone flowers. So um, I can't remember exactly why I wanted to do white, but there was a specific reason. It's been a while, but um, the red violet looks really pretty too. With the red violet, I did use more yellow greens in my uh, background. So I think the yellow greens and the red violet really look great together since they're complementary. On this one, I have some rusty reds and oranges and some yellow in the center and then I have a little bit more of a subdued yellow green to neutral green in my background but play around. Vicki, hello. So Vicki's my uh, helper. So uh, Vicki you can um, help me watch out here for comments so let's see i think the the white was really pretty so you've got the white and the green so let's get started i wanted to talk just a little bit about the the texture and i have a a video that I just um, shared again on my uh, Artful Endeavors page on Facebook that you can uh, look at about applying texture. Any of these texture products, you want to make sure that it's very subtle. Once you put paint on here, it's really going to show up, but don't put your texture on heavy. So that's just not nearly as attractive. And besides that, you have to wait forever for it to dry. 
So I try to get it on as thin as possible. I, this probably won't show until I start putting some paint on here. But I wanted to show you, I like my offset palette knife to put texture on a product. When you dip into the bottle, you want to pick up the product on the back of your texture, on the, your palette knife and then go in all kinds of different directions. And don't feel like you have to cover up the entire uh, canvas or surface because some of the underneath surface coming through just gives you a little different texture. So um, have fun with texture. I think it's really fun to paint on top of. So I have my instruction sheet, and students usually like it if I um, try to do things the same way I put on my um, uh, instructions. So I'll keep glancing back to it. Now, the background, we're going to start. I've used Deco Art Americana paint, and we've got light buttermilk, and we've got buttermilk. And we have antique white, and you can see that they're all an ivory type color and light, medium, and darker values with it, so we can have some variety. I'm going to shake these up and put them on my palette here. And I'll keep picking my palette up so you can see what I'm doing. You probably don't need quite as much of the antique white. Now if you had desert sand instead, you could use that. I think they've discontinued desert sand. I really liked it. Um, so I've got my three values out here. And I'm going to use a large flat brush. Okay, this is my one inch golden Taclon brush. I do, you'll see I use the Sharf brushes. I think they're really great quality. I like them. So I'm wetting my brush and I'm folding my paper towel here so I'll be ready. What am I recording with? I'm recording with my um, mobile phone, my Samsung. And it does take really great photos and videos. And that was one of the reasons I got it. So it's really great on... Um, Facebook Live. Let me show you before we get started. Yep, if your brushes are getting loose, Lori, um, it's time to go shop. Treat yourself. Tell somebody that's what you want for a present. So, um, no reason we can't get Father's Day presents. I want to uh, point out to you before we get started here, our light is coming from the upper right. You can see on the flower heads that it's lightest right up here in this part of the flower head. Okay. So on our background, I want to leave a little bit more light in this section and it'll get darker on the other side. Okay, so I'm going to take this out of my way here, and we'll get the other painting that we're working on up here. Let's see if I can get my paints on the screen too. I'm going to start with some of my light buttermilk and just start slip slapping it. We're going to be working wet into wet, and I'm just shoveling up paint. You can see I've got 
a fair amount of paint there. And I put some down away from that light buttermilk and then worked back into it. I'm not trying, I don't know how well you can see that, but I'm not trying just to blend it all out. Now I've picked up some of the buttermilk. Here's some of the light buttermilk. Let's just start out here, blend back a little bit. And I'm just Xing on the hair. I like to go ahead and catch my edges. I like the gallery wrapped canvases. I'm going to pick up some more light buttermilk. Blend back a little bit and get this edge. I think it's easier to go ahead and do my blending as I go. I'm on my edges rather than trying to come back and match it later. And I'm going to pick up some antique white. I've shoveled that up again and I'm going to put it down here. Let's blend it in a little bit and I can work it back up into some of the other. I'm going to pick up some antique white and some buttermilk and let's just work these two. Now if I wanted this to be really smooth I would be applying it with my brush really close to the surface but I want the movement in my paint. Oops. Catch this edge here. So I can have my brush up higher. Running out of spaces to hold it. Let's get some more buttermilk here. And as I work over to this edge, I'm going to pick up more buttermilk and do a little bit of blending. There's not a lot of blending to this. Because we want that movement. I do want this corner covered. Okay, I'm gonna wash my brush. And I'm going to dry with the hair dryer. Just got paint all over myself, so I'm cleaning up my hands here a little bit. That's what happens when you catch a wet canvas. So here's the hair dryer. Okay, we'll let that cool off a little bit, washing out my brush here, and I'm going to change brushes, and I'm going to go for my three-quarter uh, flat. Let's see what I said. using the law. I think I will go back to my uh, one inch. You could use a one inch or three quarter to start putting the grass in. And what we're going to be doing is flicking up 
like this with the brush. Okay, let me just point out, when you flick, you want your brush to be perpendicular to your surface. Um, and then what happens when you flick is it lifts off of the surface. If you start this way, first thing you do is dig into the surface. If you start like this, first thing you do is dig into your surface. So you want to have your brush completely perpendicular and you're flicking away. You can push a little bit harder and create longer flicks. So that's the way we're going to start the grass on here. Now, my greens were avocado. That's my medium value. I've got plantation pine, which is a really nice dark yellowish green. And then here's desert cactus. So I put some of those out on my palette here. Oh, I'll just mention, if when you get this finished, you didn't get a good coverage or you don't like what you've got, you can always pre-dampen it just a little, come back, same colors, and go over it again. Or you could just paint the whole thing over again. So, let me get my greens out. There's my avocado and plantation pine. And I'm getting out my desert cactus. I'll pull in here a little bit and just get closer. All right, from the water, I want to blot my brush. It doesn't have to be completely dry, but I do want to blot it. And I'm going to start out with the desert cactus. And one reason I'm doing this is I want to uh, see how it is on my brush. After I've worked a little bit, it'll be seasoned. But right now, I don't know. I don't know exactly how much moisture is in my brush. So this is our, our test. Okay. Also, if you're getting used to doing this, it doesn't show so much. So I'm going to hold way back here on my brush. I'm almost back to the end of it. I'm setting it up perpendicular. And I'm flicking up. And notice this is finger action. And I'm not trying to make it really dark. I want it to be longest of here on the uh, left. And it gets shorter on the right. And we're just flicking up here. So this is the beginning of some grasses. Now, I didn't wash my brush, but I'm picking up some plantation pine. And that was a little damp right there, so I'm going to start down here and just flick up some plantation pine. Flick softly. If you can't flick softly, pick up a little bit more paint. And you don't have to cover everything. And I'm just flicking up. And come back and catch this side. That's pretty dry now. I'm starting off I'm going to catch the edge of the canvas. And I'll pick up a little bit of my... That was avocado. This is plantation pine. And I can let it be a little bit lighter over on the right side, but I do want to get some nice darks. 
on my left side. So that's what it looks like right now. Then we're going to start putting in some grass blades. Now you don't have to dry, but I want a number 10 flat. Okay. I'm going to wet it and lot just a little. I'm going to start by picking up some of my desert cactus. Again, we're testing to see how much uh, water is in the paint. And using my chisel edge, I'm going to do this in slow motion. I'm going to come up here and we can cross. And we're just pulling up some grass blades. Pick up a little more paint. Let some grow go off the top. I need to do, bring that down the rest of the way. And you want to cross over and this side they can come back up and over up and over and you see how they're fading away let's let a few fade away over here i've got very little paint on my brush right now okay so those look like they're coming a little more in the background so i'm going to pick up and you see i've got a few water drops here let's just pick up a water drop and come over into my avocado this time. Same thing. And I like some of my grasses to be coming over. You can always sharpen your brush up again. If I've got an ugly spot down here, I can always pull a grass blade from it. And I'm running out of paint of it here, so they're getting gradually lighter. I really like that. And I'm going straight in to my plantation pine, unless it gets... <clears throat> very dry. I can pick up a little bit of water here because I don't want these too dark. And this will just be a few of our darker blades of, of grass. And maybe my brush is a little bit dry. Maybe these aren't quite as tall. And this is just kind of a thicket. And I can let a few grass blades go in different direction. Isn't this fun? And a few more grass blades here. All right, that looks like they haven't gotten the lawnmower out for the year. I'm washing my brush. I'm going to pause here a minute and look at comments. Thanks, Gilbert. Just watching it come to life. When you, let's see, Lori, talking about the chisel edge. Yes, when you're loading your brush up, you want to hold it low to your surface so that you've created a good chisel edge. If you load your brush like this, look what's happening. The brush is spreading out. You're telling the brush that you want it to spread out. 
If you hold it low, you're telling the brush you want it to be flat. And there you've got your good chisel edge. And notice as I was doing the grass, I was doing three or four strokes and coming back over and stroking on my palette again to keep my chisel edge. I like that grass. Don't overdo it. The title of this is White Cone Flowers, Not Green Grass. So we don't want to go overboard with the grass. Wash my brush just a little bit more. Look back at some of the, the comments. Reminds you of a dewy spring morning? Yes. Good, Barbara. I'm glad you like it. Oh, good, Chris. I'm glad you like the brush loading. Oh, it's just so easy to overdo it, isn't it? Yeah. We could do a gorgeous painting and just do... Wouldn't this be pretty to do something like this and then have something real soft and misty in the background, make it more about the grasses. Hmm. <laughs> Janelle, how did I make the illusion of the fern? Well, that was the crackle texture that was in this spot. And it was just purely because the crackle texture did it. So um, I'm afraid that wasn't really a trick except for the crackle texture. Uh, but um, if you can, yeah, there it is. So that's the crackle. Oh, I'll show you this one again while we're just waiting a minute on that to dry. Um, this is not on texture. It's just on a plain canvas, and it works, too. So, And you could certainly do it on wood or tin or um, watercolor paper. Just make sure whatever surface you have it um, prepped appropriately sap green i love sap green while this is drying so you don't have to just listen to the hair dryer i have pulled out some of my uh deco art traditions paints this one's really old it says jansen art but they're uh, deco art traditions and this is indian yellow uh the traditions are the fine art um uh, brand um, line that Deco Art makes and the pigments are just wonderful. Uh, they don't have the binder, all that binder that the Americana have in them, uh, but they still don't lift when you don't want them to. Um, so I'll use a little bit of those the other nice thing is that the traditions are compatible with the Americana paint. So uh, you could get a tradition or two uh, color and use it with your um, Americana paints. And I love especially the traditions reds. They're um, such a strong pigment, you can paint right over black with them. So um, I really like that. I'm looking back to see if there are any other questions. You like those colors. When I painted the original one, um, Desert Cactus had not been created yet. And uh, whatever, I've, I don't have it on my list here, but whatever I used for my light one, uh, light value on this one's no longer available. So I had to look for a new color, but I do like the desert cactus, and I do like the way those colors are working together. So um, there are just so many different things 
you could do with this. Let's see. Looking at my comments here. Clothes have paint on them. Oh, yeah. Aprons help, but they don't cover everything. So when I started using the um, uh, Americana, well, I started using Americana paints a long time ago because Deco Art was looking for helping artists. And if you signed up to be a helping artist, you got free paint. So I did that and they got me hooked. I've been a Deco Art person ever since. The paint was just so wonderful. Um, so I have stuck with Deco Art, and then they came out with the traditions, and I love the the traditions. Um, and y you get to do more mixing, which I think is a lot of fun. Okay, so let's see how we're doing here. I'm going to dry it just a little bit. Because the next thing to do is to put on my um, flower pattern. <laughs> I wanted to show you, get a little closer here. Can you see the texture showing up where it catches the paint or doesn't catch the paint? And then there's texture up in here. I think that's really fun. So I'm going to put my pattern on. And I'll usually do my design work on um, tracing paper. That way I can erase and change it and um, make as many mistakes as I want to. And then when I get ready to put it on my surface, I've got it pretty much where I want it to be. Um, and with my pattern on here, I could decide where I wanted to put my flowers. If I hadn't put my grass a different way, I could still decide where I wanted my flowers. But I like it right in this area is my center of interest. To create your center of interest, usually you're going to look at your um, surface and divide it visually or I could even use everybody wants to talk to me this afternoon I could use my chalk pencil and divide it up just like you were doing tic-tac-toe into thirds Okay, so where these thirds intersect, one of those sections is usually going to be where your um, center of interest is going to be. You don't want to put it smack dab in the middle. Now I know as decorative artists, we have done a lot of painting with um, uh, a floral or a fruit design um, in the center. And that's an artistic choice. So that's up to you. So I'm gonna put my pattern on here. And when you're putting your pattern on, you wanna be able to hinge it on there. 
and I usually use my artist tape, but I think it's across the room. So I use my blue tape, and you can see that really good. So I've got it on one side, and it's hinged. Now, most of you know this, and then you're going and make sure you've got it where you want it to be, and then slip your graphite underneath it. And then I'm going to use my stylus. If you like using a red pen, that works good too. Teaching, I use my patterns over again. So it doesn't help me to use a red pen because next time I come back to use it, I've got red all over it, so it really doesn't help me see where I've been unless I change colors. So I use my stylus. And I'm using um, a dark gray. Okay, usually I'll check, and I, if I'm um, not doing a demo piece, and this is a demo piece here, I want to make sure that my graphite lines are as light as I possibly can make them and still be able to see them good. Okay, because with graphite lines, you can do one of two things. You can either erase or you can paint over it. If they're really dark, it makes them hard to erase. Let me get this flower on there. So if I was... <clears throat> Excuse me, if I was able to, I would use white graphite paper because that's easier to um, erase. Looking at the comments here. That dividing your canvas into thirds and where you want to put your center of interest, if that's what you're talking about in photography, all of these artistic theory and apply all the way across art. Dividing your Canvas into thirds is called the golden mean, the golden. Okay, just about finished. I think some of you are painting with me. I had quite a few people order the packet already. If you ordered last night or in the morning, I'll email the packet to you when I get through doing the demo. I knew I wouldn't have time to do it today. All right, so let's check. All right, I can see that one. You probably can't see it as well, but I can see it. And I'm... If I needed to refer back to my pattern, I could leave it hinged on here, but I don't need to come back to it. So I'll put that away. And the first thing I ask you to do on here is the flower centers and tap that in. And we're using the avocado to tap in the flower centers. And if you could really use any brush that works for you, 
but this is a round blender brush. This one's very old with the green handle. Um, my Sharf um, Bringle Blenders, yeah, here's a new one. Um, these are the Bringle Round Blenders, and it used to be Badger hair. I'm not sure what it is these days, um, but uh, they work really great. These old ones with, this is one of the brushes that often improves with age. So I like using my old ones as well. So here's my avocado. I didn't wet my brush. I just tapped into that avocado and I'm going to tap a center. I don't have to come all the way out to the edge. This is just to get some shadow texture underneath there. I have a really shaky hand, so you have my permission not to shake as much as I do. Okay, and we'll do this one. You can always get larger with your centers, but you can't get smaller. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush here. Okay, Belinda just ordered the packet. Storm's coming through. Remind me where you are, Belinda. Belinda's painted with me before. We've got storms coming through tomorrow, and I hope we get a good bit of rain because it is so dry here. Our grass is brown. This is, let me pull my brush back out again. This is a round Bringle Blender by Sharf. Okay, they come in different sizes. This one happens to be a 10. As you work with these brushes, they will wear down. And you see that's an old one and it's really worn. It gives some great texture uh, when I'm wanting the type of texture that uh, uh, this little short fuzzed out brush works. So, um, yeah, look at that one. That's great. We get lots of really good fuzzy. Wouldn't that be a good teddy bear brush there? This one's brand new. Uh, well, let's see. They come even a little sharper when they're brand new. <clears throat> and they get better as they round off a little bit. But they're wonderful brushes. I uh, use the flat blender brush a lot in my landscapes. If any of you have done landscapes with me, you've seen me use this brush. You can do bushes, grasses, roads, mountains, um, not a whole lot you can't do with the flat Bringle blender. So um, you can look at Sharf for those, then Sharf is artbrush.com. So if you're looking for those. Now, while I'm waiting for the centers to dry a little bit more, we can start pulling the petals. And I've used light buttermilk and desert cactus. So let me get some more light buttermilk out here because what I've got is drying. I'll put it down here with my desert cactus. And I didn't say what brush I used. I could use a um, filbert or 
a round brush. Let's see, I asked for a six filbert. So let's use the six filbert. Again, this is Sharf. Here's my number six filbert brush. Gives you a really nice rounded point. So we're going to do um, two passes with these petals. The first time I'm going to use a greenish, light green. Okay, this will do a couple things. First of all, especially down here, if I paint that petal, it will cover the grasses behind it. Okay, so you can't see through it. So it'll give some opacity to the petal. And it gives us a little bit of shadow. So I'm picking up more paint each time. That was a little greener than I wanted to be. Let me get this little, my little demo card here. <clears throat> and I'm just pushing and release. It's kind of like a bad comma stroke. And if you're like me, you've made some of those. So I've still got some green down here, light buttermilk. And the nice thing, let me show you again, about this filbert brush is that I can paint on the chisel edge or I can paint flat. I could start on the chisel edge, flatten out, and then come off on the edge and daisy petals often have that little thin tip on the end of it. So this little filbert brush works really good. So do you see where this one's thinner on the end? Why not use a round, Lori? You certainly could if you prefer. I just love filbert brushes. Now there's a petal underneath here. And then I'm going to pick up some more just like buttermilk. And I can pull right over the top of that. And let me catch the underneath side. When we come back for the second pass, I'll make that look more like it's on top. And I can just go right over those flipped edges. You know, Lori saying filberts don't work for her as well. And I certainly have brushes that I'm handicapped using. I can't use a scroller to save me. I like the medium length. Now, see I pulled up into that center. That's okay, that's not a problem. I like a medium length, a sharp Dresden liner works really good for me. It has to be long enough to hold some paint, but I never was able to control a script, a long script liner. Let me get a little bit closer. You can see these are just bad comma strokes. What is Lisa saying? Oops. My laptop needs some juice. There we go. Liz, you made me want to paint grass. This is beautiful. Oh, thanks, Lisa. It's 
Now, I'm always trying to figure out what's an easy way to paint something. I decided a long time ago that I didn't like to base coat. So I'm always trying to find my way around base coating. All right, my brush is getting all um, congested with paint. So I'm going to wash it out and reload for the final flower. Let's see here. All right, this is a round. This one happens to be a low Cornell number four round. When I started painting, and I still start any beginners with three basic brushes, a round, a flat, and a liner. Okay. Now, I just need to make sure that my round brush is going to be uh, large enough to cover the area I want to cover. So you can do all this with a round brush too. And make sure I can see these. Either brush works just fine. Uh, that one's really big. Using a little bit more of the light buttermilk with it down here. Nice thing about working on a small surface is that you can turn it any way that works. And I'm not doing anything really special except painting these petals in. And just going one after the other. Now it's a good idea It's a good idea to paint the petals that are in the back first and then I can layer the petals that are on top of them. See like that one's on top. I'm going to come in here and pull that one. Now they've all got some version of greenish petals. So some of these, these are fairly dry. And um, I'm going to come back and lightly stroke over them with titanium white. And I'm not going to pull completely all the way to the center. And that way, I'll keep some of the green there. So this is the uh, Deco Art titanium white. Um, I really like the Traditions uh, titanium white because the pigment is so strong and you get all these wonderful whites. While the students have been out of the studio, I, um, I found some titanium white. I haven't ordered paints and so I'm low on some of my colors. So I will, let me just do a little demo here for you. Okay, this is the um, Americana. Clean my brush. Look at those great streaks in there. I love it when it does that in um, flower petals. And this is the... 
traditions, can you see that it's stronger pigment? So depending on what I'm wanting my white to accomplish for me. All right, so we're going to overstroke. And I'm going to, this is the Americana white I'm going for right now. Oh, it looks like people are liking it. I must be doing okay. Most of you can hear me, right? <clears throat> okay, I'm going to come back here. And this petal's in the back. So I'm going to flick in there. I'm reloading my brush. And I'll flick back there. Now this petal is on top of those two. So I'll push and just flick. Do you see how it's not going all the way to the center? I'm going to just flick a little bit on that back there. Maybe just a few little pulls there. But this petal is on top. So I'm going to carefully pull that into the edge to make it look like it's rolled over. And let's just lightly lighten that a little. So I've saved some of my shadow there. Always working from the tip to the center. And notice that I've flattened my brush out some. So I've made it more like my filbert brush. I just caught myself doing that. And when you're painting a comma stroke, let's see if I can do it here. You're going to gradually release and you can pull a nice, beautiful, th long, thin tail. But look what we're doing here. We're pushing and flicking so that it fades out here. So every time I do a stroke, I'm coming over and loading my brush like it has two sides, like it's a filbert. And these petals have some rolled up edges, so I'm going to just, both of those pull just a little bit underneath. And then I'm going to really flatten out my brush And I can pull up the tip where it's rolled up. Catch that. All right, here we go. Now, I've got these petals yeah, right here and these on this one. So we have to decide which is on top. And on my original, I said these petals were on top. So I don't want that to get too light in there. So let's just do some little easy strokes there. So we've still got some green showing. And on this flower then, I can come in. This is a good place to use my Traditions White. And let that be wider. Yeah, I really like the way that worked. And not pulling that one very long. I want it to be underneath. Look at the difference my traditions is making over the um, Americana. So I could come back over there and let some of these petals come out a little bit more. I 
Each time I come over and reload my brush, I've gone back to the Americana. Still got some traditions in my brush. And let's catch this one first. And I picked up a little bit of traditions here. Okay, really liking the way this flower is looking. Usually have to let my hand get warmed up a little. Let's pull that back a little further. Most of these petals are underneath the only parts that really need to be bright white are this turned petal and those turned edges and it's nice to have that come out a little further. All right, let's come over here. Um, I'm going to do the traditions and the Americana. I'm not going to pull back. I don't like the tip of that. Didn't pull it back as far. And here we go, this one. We're going to save a lot of the shadow on that one. And this big petal. These large petals are a challenge for my number four round brush. There's something kind of soothing and mesmerizing when I paint these back petals about just pulling comma strokes. And I'm not a stroke work painter, but I think learning to um, make nice comma strokes is a necessary tool because, as you see, you're going to be pulling comma-ish strokes in many things. So now we have petals on our flowers. I promised I would talk about different um, colors. And you can really use whatever color you preferred. Here I've used um, a red-violet color. And since I did this one, there are some really great um, Americana colors. I'm looking over here for my red-violet. Here's red-violet. Red-violet was one of the colors that Deco Art had said they were going to discontinue. But um, they decided to keep it, uh, and that's really great. But look at these. Wouldn't they make great um, petals? We've got some great colors there. Let me, while my white is drying, let me pull, put out a little bit of these colors this is berry cobbler, which is a newer color, and it is just wonderful. It's so yummy. Um, I guess that's why they had to give it a food name. Um, you could do pink petals. I, I love my dragon fruit. Razzleberry is another one that's really great. Any of those pinks that have a little bit of red violet in them would be great. Let me get my practice board over here. And if I load up with my ram brush, and I'm going to flatten it a bit. Let's just pull over one of these white petals. Isn't that yummy looking? really like that. That was the uh, berry. Is that the berry cobbler? What was that? That was magenta. 
Yeah, let me get my filbert brush out here just for fun. And load up with the berry cobbler. And we'll paint over one of these. Me, it's pretty thick here. There you go, gorgeous. Any of those would be really good. Now you could do if if you're painting that with a um, an Americana color, I would paint them. Um, white first okay just like we did here because with that green behind up and all of these colors can you see that you can see a little bit of the streaking the stroke through them so they're going to be a little bit transparent so your greenery would show through and it would be kind of dull and and not what you want so um, I would paint them white first, and then you could glaze over them with any color you want, um, or not necessarily glaze. This would be um, a, a full load, like I did just a little while ago. Let me, this magenta, that would be gorgeous. So, lots of colors that you could use. All right, let me look here. Um, my comments keep jumping away from me. Deborah says, got a delivery of medic supplies for having 10 big boxes. House looks like a hoarder. Okay, Chris, as far as I know, Traditions was originally a Janssen product. I've used it since it started painting over 12 years ago. The line was moved to Deco Art a few years ago. I'm not sure it's the same chemistry or the original. Uh, David Janssen worked with Deco Art to develop the Traditions paints. They were always a Deco Art paint, so it's the same formulation. and. Uh, David and Echo Art parted ways and he came out with his own uh, line. He wanted his own line of paint. So these are still the same paints um, that they um, have always been. And Echo Art has always owned the, the paints. On the stems, let's go ahead and add some stems here. Now, these are fairly healthy stems. You don't want uh, little bitty stems for these flowers. Um, I'm looking here to see stems. I used my filbert brush and avocado and then shaded them with plantation pine. Need some more avocado out here. Every time I put paint out, I'm putting it in a separate area. I don't want to pick up dried paint flecks. So here's my avocado. Now you could use your round brush if you prefer a round brush. And I'm going to go up between those petals and then just push a little bit. To pull my stem down there. Here we go. Let me just make it fit that. Pull it down and I'm just going to let it disappear as it goes down. And this you want to come out of the center. Pull it down. Now, I got on my pedal, but I can just take my damp flat brush and clean that off. I figured out that it was a 
lot easier for me to clean up than it was to try and be perfect. So I'm going to wipe my brush. I'm picking up some plantation pine. And uh, coming out from under here, I'm just going to flick down just to darken that a little bit. And we're going to flick down. And washing my brush, I'm going to pick up a little bit of my desert cactus. Let's work that into my brush. And our light's coming from the right side, so I can just lightly pull down a little bit on that right side. Okay, I want it to fade away coming across there. Now, if you didn't get the fade that you would like, you could come back in with your uh, flat brush, any of these paint colors, and you know, pull across. Now, I came across the flower petals. That's not bad. I like that. It really puts the flower into the background. So maybe I want to do that also. I kind of like that. Now I can come in with my, this is my half inch um, wash brush. Now your number 10, 12, 14 would work too. I'm going to come in with a side load of my plantation pine and do a little bit of shading. So here I'm loading my brush. I want to make sure I get a good side load. load both sides of my brush overlapping the first side and I can come around the center of that flower and I could separate some of the petals let me refresh my load here Just refreshing my side load. And this is just sticking them up underneath the um, flower head. I skipped that one. I wanted it to be a little bit lighter. I think I'm going to skip that one. These are tucked up underneath. That one I need to walk out a little bit more. Okay, refreshing my brush. I want to shade this one back here a little bit more and catch up underneath the center and separate some of the petals. I could walk out and make the side load wider if I want to. Okay, so I've got my shadow around the center there. That pretty much does the petals unless you want to come back and uh, reinforce something if your white wasn't as strong as you wanted it to be. Um, and if you wanted to do that, then pick up a little bit of the Americana white and I could come in and just kind of flick over anything that I wanted to strengthen. Like the tip of that. 
Okay, I think that was very light. I didn't use much pressure at all. Should there, should be here in the, um, it'll be on the page later. It's being recorded and you can go back and look at it again and paint along with me and you can stop and start any way you would like to. So let's work on our centers here. And I'm still going to use, now you could use a filbert or the round. Either way, I'll go ahead and use my round here. And we're going to be adding the shape. And so I need um, reading my instructions here. All right, so I need my plantation pine, which I have here, and some burnt sienna. And I've used the Indian yellow. If you don't have the Indian yellow, um, cad yellow or tangerine, you see this is kind of in between tangerine and cad yellow. Get rid of that water drop right there. And what else do I need? And light buttermilk. I need some fresh light buttermilk. So we're just going to get some color in there. Actually, I'm going to use my filbert brush. And I'm going to start with the burnt sienna. And I'm just going to tap over that with some burnt sienna. Not trying to lose all the dark. I'm going to pick up some plantation pine. And just work that down at the bottom for the shadow. Our light's coming this way. So our light hysteria is going to be up in here. Actually, it's going to be the same shape as the object. So it's kind of like a, a cone shape. And then our shadow will be opposite that. I'm going to wipe my brush. I'm going to pick up some of the Indian yellow. Uh, this is not going to be really bright because it's all going over that green right now. There we go. And I'm just tapping some of that in there. So this is our underneath. So here's my burnt sienna. I'm going to wipe, picking up plantation pine. Opposite your light. Picking, I'm just wiping in between these colors. Here's some of the Indian yellow I've just stabbed in. Let's go ahead, this one, since I've got Indian yellow on the brush, I'll start with it. I'll wipe off, I'll pick up my burnt sienna. Just tap them together. Wipe my brush. I'm picking up the plantation pine. And you know that green and red mixed together will make brown. So we've got some brown going on there. So now I'm going to go to a liner brush or a two round would work really good. So if your four is in good shape, you could use it. So what we want to do is to get the texture into the, the head. So we've got our shadow with the plantation pine down here, our undercoat. We're going to load up some of the uh, um, burnt sienna. 
little bit of the uh, Indian yellow, or you could use tangerine. Now we're also going to need for this site we're going to use um, the sunny day. So I need to get it out. Thanks, Tanya. Vanessa, thank you. All right, the main thing you want, darker on this side, lighter on this side. Okay, so I'm picking up. All right, this is gonna start, stop jiggling here in a minute. Okay, picking up my burnt sienna. I'm going to stick the tip into and I'm just doing little touches. Let's pick up a little more burnt sienna. Just barely get the tip into the um, yellow. There we go. I'm going to change brushes. Now I know why I said line of brush. All right. And we're just tipping into the Indian yellow. We just want to get that texture in there. Get a little bit more yellow up here on the top. Little short pulls. I don't want this to look too perfect or contrived. I want it to kind of vary. And as we go across, reading my instructions here, I'm going to start picking up. I've got the burnt sienna, a little bit of my Indian yellow, and I've dipped into the uh, yellow. Now this is pretty strong, so let's start over here on the edge. i let it fade away as it goes across. Let's do the same thing. Load into the burnt sienna, pick up a little bit of the Indian yellow, and here's some of the sunny day. We'll start on this side. Now here I can come all the way out to my edge. Burnt sienna. And right now I just have the Indian yellow on there. I want to come across the bottom here a little more. Now this is not as bright as I want to want it to be, so I'm wiping my brush, and I've got just some of the sunny day on here. Okay, I'm going to let that dry, and come back, and I'll lighten my lightest area, so we'll do the same thing. On this, I'm going to start up here, and let my yellow wear out as I come down. Just tapping these across. 
pick up more paint. get a little more of the Indian yellow on there. There we go. A little pull downs. I'm going to create a little more texture along this edge. There we go. I like that better. Let me come back and do the same thing over here and pull in a little bit okay I go back to this one I'm just tapping in some burnt sienna now coming across, wiping my brush. I'm going to pick up some of the Indian yellow and we'll tap this in coming across here. Now this is the sunny day that we want to get lighter in this area. I don't have as much of the burnt sienna on my brush. I'll pull it down here. It was stopping too quickly. Okay, so little taps. I can go back to this one. It's dried a little bit with that sunny day. And let's make it fade out a little. Just little taps and touches. Yeah. And then this one's going to be painted the same way. I'm going to look at instructions here. You get, Susan, you get the pattern from me. It's um, the, um, it's on my website, artfulendeavors.net, under ePackets. Um, you can uh, look at the event on Creative Innovations, and the link is there. It's also on my Facebook page, Artful Endeavors on Facebook. So let's get this other. I'm starting with just the burnt sienna. I've got a little something. My brush was dirty. And I'm just tapping in. I want to get to the accent colors in the background. I think the accent colors just really make the painting come alive. Okay, that was just burnt sienna. Now I'm picking up Indian yellow with it. Let's catch this edge as it's going over the wet paint. It's fading away. See that it's fading as it comes down there. Picking up more Indian yellow. We'll work across a little bit. Thanks, Chris. Chris just posted the packet link. And I do email the packets out. So don't expect it to miraculously appear with the digital download. I've still got to figure out how to work that with my system. And I haven't had time just to sit down and do that. 
Okay, lightening up with a little bit of the Indian yellow through there. And we'll get a little bit more of the sunny day. Pull through that light area. Don't want to go down too far with that. Let me soften this. This my head's turned a little bit that way, so the light's gonna be on top, but I do want to catch just a little bit more of the Indian yellow as it comes down so it fades away. Now I can wipe my brush, come through with some light buttermilk and just in our brightest area we can lighten up Remember, it's in this area right, right here. This is still a little bit wet. Just little touches. Didn't mean for that to go down so far. All right. Really like that. I would come back and work on the shape here a little bit yeah I like that better and we've pulled the stems now in the background I can go back to one of my larger brushes. Here's my one inch flat. And I could pick up a little bit of this burnt sienna. And I still have a little bit of water in this brush. If you like using glazing medium, you could do that too. But I could come through someplace Don't want that up there. And with my chisel edge or with my flat, I could add a few blades of grass. Those are all stopping at the same place. And let me pull one across there. I can also come through with, let me get my 10 or half inch, 12, 14, and some of my Indian yellow and load that up. I could do kind of the same thing. I could just glaze a little bit, let the sun shine through in a place or two. This is picking up some of the texture back up in there. Could even let it shine on a, a petal or two. It has to be something that light's catching. And the last thing I did was come in and add some floss picking. Now, you can use a foliage brush or you can use a toothbrush. I have most control. Let's use some avocado here and make a puddle. I have most control with my liner brush and specking. And 
I can come through here and add some specs. Use a little bit of plantation pine. That's yeah, not quite juicy enough. Has to be ju juicy enough, but not too much. If it's too much, your specs will be too large. And you don't necessarily want them everywhere. But this is all those little specks that are in the air, a little pollen and dust. Let's see if this shows at all. This is some of the Indian yellow. Yeah, I can see it. Now down here at the bottom, I can use some of my white. And the Americana white's good for this. This could be some little flowers I could use. Even use some of my um, sunny day. See, I like that to break up some of the green area. So you could really spec with most any color that you like that's in your piece. So I think that's most of what I have. Oh, I did come back with some white grass blades. So let's thin this out a little bit. I don't want it to be white, white. I just want it to be there a little bit and up and over. Okay, just to pull a little bit of that. And that's an option if you like it or or not. So I'm gonna call this a painting. I think it looks pretty good. And look at my comments here. You're welcome. Hi, Nancy. Thanks, Nancy. I'm glad you like it. So Nancy paints with me. Um, thanks everybody. Thanks Belinda, Paula, Carol. Yes, I recognize some of these names. A lot of you have ordered packets. You can still get the packets. Just give me a chance to email them to you. Um, everybody say thanks. I'm glad you liked the class. I hope you did. And Deborah Butterfly or Bumblebee would be wonderful there. Little Dragonfly, I think Dragonflies are cute and really easy. Thanks, Lisa. Lisa is, is one of our good people here on Creative Innovations. Let's see, Chris says, why well, pull the stems after the petals are painted? I'd be tempted to put them at the same time as the grass. Um, you could. I have a better idea of where I want to place them after my petals are on there. And let that come down there more. But you could put them in there first as long as you can still paint over the top of them. Um, the other reason to use that little bit of green with uh, um, white when you first paint your petals is white's fairly, um, if you're using the Americana white, uh, it is um, somewhat transparent. So you want to make sure you've got enough in there that um, it'll cover. So that's one other reason. But anything that works for you. So thanks everybody. And this will be saved in um, the guides. 
your own creative innovation. I'm looking back through the um, the comments here. So you can still leave me um, comments and I'll look through and answer any questions. And um, you can find a lot more of my um, uh, short technique videos over on uh, Artful Endeavors on Facebook. Uh, be sure and uh, like the page. Um, also, you can sign up for my newsletter. I've been sending everybody a link uh, when they ordered packets, but you can sign up on my website artfulendeavors.net and I hope to see all of you again soon. Thanks!